Are you curious about how rank works in the US Army? Well, let's stick around because I'm gonna explain it right here in this video. What's up, I'm Christopher Chaos, and welcome to another Military Mondays. In this episode, I'm gonna break down the rank of the US Army. I was enlisted, but I do know some stuff about uh, warrant officers and officers and how they get to that and what the ranking insignias are for each kind of rank and everything. So we'll kind of break it down in this video, give a little bit of explanation about that rank and what it kind of entails, and hopefully teach you a little bit of stuff about how rank structure works in the US Army. Okay, so I gotta jump in here in the middle of editing this video. Uh, originally, I broke down enlisted warrant officers and officers, and they got really long. This video was gonna be super long, so I'm only gonna break down enlisted rank from E1 to E9. So if you want to know more about war officers or officers, make sure at the end of this video, if you still liked it, to hit the thumbs up, maybe leave some comments, and maybe next Monday, I'll break down warrant officers and officers. So let's get back to it. So if you go straight into the army, straight out of high school, no college or anything like that, you're probably gonna start off as an E1, which is a private. Now this rank does not have an actual insignia. When I was in the military, when I first came in the military, we wore the BDU uniform, which had the rank on the collars. So just you had nothing on the collars if you were an E1 private. Later we switched to the ACUs, and now they have a different even camouflage uniform that they're starting to uh, slowly transition into. And on those ones, you have a little Velcro patch right on the chest. So for those soldiers that come in and they are privates E1s, they just have a blank patch spot right there where the Velcro is exposed. So nowadays a lot of people call that the fuzzies because it's just kind of exposing the fuzzy part of the Velcro. But those soldiers are really low on the totem pole. They're just low soldiers that don't make a whole lot of money and probably get stuck doing a lot of crummy taskings. To give you an idea of the pay for soldiers that are the rank of private, they only probably make about $1,400 a month. Now, in the military, you paid twice a month, the first of the month and the 15th of the month, so that $1,400 will be divided into the first of the month and the 15th of the month. So the soldiers are making about $700-ish uh, per paycheck. Now, there's a lot of other things to give or take. Sometimes you are married, so you get extra funds for that. If you're in a combat zone, you get extra money, and then taxes and everything. So I'm just saying ish, because there are a lot of other factors, but just to give you a general idea, it's somewhere around give or take $700. Now, to move up in rank, it usually just requires not getting in trouble and just meeting the time and service requirements. For a private E1 to move up to private E2, which is technically private second class, but nobody ever calls it that, they just call it private. They just have to stay out of trouble and meet six months in time and service. Once those six months are up as an E1, then usually you can move up to an E2 and make a little bit more money. So now this rank actually has an insignia that they get to wear. A lot of people call it getting their mosquito wings. So this now allows the soldier to now no longer have just a blank Velcro uh, patch on their chest. They actually have a rank insignia of a private. They're still usually pretty low on the totem pole, but not quite as low as a private E1. Some soldiers are able to join the army as a private E2. Sometimes this just depends on maybe if you have a little bit of uh, civilian education or maybe you got a friend to join the military along with you. Kind of a little different kind of incentive sometimes to come in as a a little bit higher rank rather than being E1, you get to come in as an E2. So to move up to the next rank, which is Private First Class or PFC, simply just have to be in the Army for a year and been a Private E2 for at least four months. That's also assuming you didn't get in any trouble. That is also usually the minimum. Sometimes soldiers have to wait a little bit longer if they're not really getting real bad trouble, but a little bit of trouble, so they don't necessarily want to promote them right away, so they kind of make them wait an extra month or two or whatever. But now the private first class rank adds the little rocker, as it's called, underneath those mosquito wings. So now it just kind of moves you up the ladder a little bit more and you don't get stuck with quite as many of the crummy taskings that the privates get stuck with. Usually it's also kind of a little mental thing that uh, private first class PFCs really hate being called privates because, you know, they kind of earned their way up a little bit. So they don't really like that. They usually prefer to be called PFCs or private first class. Now to move up the ladder a little bit more, they have to serve at least two years in the army and be a private first class for at least six months. At that point, they are eligible to move up to become a specialist, which is the pay grade of an E4. At this point, soldiers are considered kind of junior non-commissioned officers. They're not actually a non-commissioned officer, but they're usually kind of the NCOs, the non-commissioned officers, go-to person to try to kind of 
you know, wrangle up the privates and get stuff accomplished. There are some cases where soldiers come in the military as a specialist or even a PFC. Again, kind of based on some of your civilian education. You can come into the army as a specialist or as a PFC if you have a little bit of civilian education and some of that transfers over high enough to kind of bump you up in rank when you first come in the army. But otherwise, you have to meet some of those time and service, time and grade requirements to get to that point. Now as a specialist, you're now actually starting to make a little bit better money and now you're more like $1,000, maybe just a slightly under, slightly over $1,000 per paycheck on the 1st and 15th. You're still not rolling in the dough and driving around in Bentleys, at least you shouldn't be, but at least you're not a private. Now, along with a specialist and an E4 rank, there's also corporal. You can be promoted to corporal, which is still an E4, but you got a little bit more responsibility. Now, technically, you're considered a non-commissioned officer, but you're still making the same pay as a specialist. A lot of times, units will promote soldiers from specialist to corporal if they are, you know, pretty well squared away and know what they're doing, and they want them to kind of take up a little bit more of a leadership role. This is kind of sometimes to prepare them for becoming a non-commissioned officer. Maybe they feel this soldier is, you know, a pretty good soldier and can take on a little bit more responsibility, but a lot of people don't really see them still as a non-commissioned officer, even though technically they are. A lot of the lower enlisted soldiers still see them as a specialist or E4s because they're still making the same pay, but they do have a little bit more responsibility than just a specialist does. Now me, I was actually a corporal for about a month when I was in the military. I was on my way to becoming a sergeant and they needed some leadership people to take care of some stuff and so they promoted me to corporal for a month before I became a sergeant. So now moving on from being a specialist or a corporal, you now move into the more official non-commissioned officers. Now it's not quite as simple as just being in the army for a certain amount of time and a certain amount of time in rank to move up to the next step of being a sergeant. The next rank is a sergeant E5. So now to be eligible to move up to be a sergeant or an E5, you have to have been an E4 for at least eight months and been in the army for at least three years. But that's not all. You're gonna need the time in service and the time in grade requirement, but you're also gonna to have to go to a board. Now, is what the board consists of is usually going in front of uh, several first sergeants and the sergeant major, which I'll explain those ranks later, and answering a bunch of military-related questions. You'll usually be in your dress uniform in front of them. Um, you'll have to do a couple of little face of maneuvers and then take a seat, and then they'll just kind of drill you on a lot of uh, kind of questions and stuff that a leader should know. A lot of it is also kind of military history and regulations and the NCO creed and several other things like that. So if the first sergeants and sergeant major felt you did well enough in front of the board, then they will recommend you for promotion. So then after you've passed the board, then you have to meet a points requirement. Points are kind of judged based on your weapons qualification, your physical fitness tests, how you did at the board, uh, things like your military education, civilian education, awards. And then from there, each job in the military has a different set of points that are required to get promoted to become a sergeant. Once you meet the requirement in points, then you can actually be promoted to that rank. Now you can actually get promoted a little bit sooner for a Sergeant E5. You can technically get promoted to a Sergeant if you've been a specialist for four months and been in the Army for a year and a half. But that's also considered the secondary zone, and that usually requires a lot more points or a little bit more points, sometimes it varies based on your job, in order to meet that requirement. Usually the secondary zone is a higher requirement of points, where the primary zone is a lower amount of points. And usually you have to be pretty squared away to get recommended to become a sergeant when you're only in the secondary zone. Now, back when I was in, in order to move on from there, you had to at least uh, complete a school. At that time, it was called PLDC which stood for the Primary Leadership Development Course. Since then, it's changed names, and I believe now it's the Warrior Leader Course. But it's no longer required to get promoted to sergeant, but you do have to, at some point, go to the school. Soldiers now can get promoted to E5 or sergeant without having to go to the school, but they will, at some point in time, have to go to that school if they want to move up to the next rank. But back when I was in, you had to do the school first, and then you got promoted to the rank. Now the E5 sergeants are typically also team leaders or squad leaders and even in some cases section leaders. They're usually in charge like a supervisor of maybe four or five, ten soldiers at a time. So then if you want to move up from sergeant to be a staff sergeant in E6, you're going to have to spend ten months as a sergeant and seven years in the army to meet that requirement for the primary zone. For the secondary zone to make it to a staff sergeant, that's gonna require five months as a sergeant and four years in the army. So just like when a specialist went to become a sergeant, you still have to go to a board, you still have to meet point requirements and all that stuff to be able to make it to that staff sergeant rank. 
Now, along with trying to make, meet the points required to become a staff sergeant and going to the board and everything, they also have a school that they have to attend. Back when I was in, it was called Beanock. I'm not really sure of what it's called now, but it is another type of school that you have to go to that's a little bit more advanced than the school you would have gone to for a sergeant. Basically, they're just trying to prepare you for leadership skills and uh, different things. Staff sergeants are typically the, uh, sometimes squad leaders, but usually a section sergeant or a, even in some cases, a platoon sergeant. Now, a, a section sergeant uh, usually is in charge of a little bit more soldiers, maybe like 10, 15 soldiers. It kind of varies based on the type of job that you're in as far as what a section consists of. Now for a soldier to move on from a staff sergeant to the next level, which is an E7, a sergeant first class, the soldier has to have been in the army for at least about six years. Now to get promoted to an E7 or a sergeant first class and actually from here on out, it works a little bit different than it worked when soldiers were becoming a sergeant or a staff sergeant. The soldiers now have to put in for a packet where it'll be reviewed by a uh, usually higher ranking personnel and kind of determined from there based on their um, past military experience if they're ready for this next promotion. And then if they get recommended, then they can move up to become a Sergeant First Class or an E7. A Sergeant First Class is usually typically a platoon sergeant, and platoons kind of vary in size, usually around maybe 20 to 50, some you know may vary based on different types of military jobs. But they're usually now senior leaders at this point in time. Sometimes a Sergeant First Class will even fill in um, to be in charge of a company for the first sergeant. Which leads us into the next rank, which is an E8. Now an E8, kind of similar to how Specialist and Corporal works, kind of has two ranks along with an E8. One being a Master Sergeant, and the other being a First Sergeant. Now a Master Sergeant is usually a senior NCO that doesn't actually have a uh, troop or a company to lead. Whereas a first sergeant has gone to probably the first sergeant academy and has now been given the command of a troop or a company. So the first sergeant has a lot more responsibilities than the master sergeant does. The first sergeant is in charge of that company or the troop. Now the reason why I say company or troop because it really depends on the type of unit. If they're in a cavalry type of unit, a company is called a troop. Where if you're not in a cavalry unit, then it's just called a company. A company can be anywhere from you know quite a few soldiers, maybe 100, maybe 200 soldiers. It just kind of depends sometimes on the type of unit. So then from there, if a first sergeant or a master sergeant is to move up in the ranks, then they would become an E9. Now the rank of an E9 also has a couple of different ranks associated with it. Actually, it has three. At the first level of an E9 is a sergeant major. Now, if that sergeant major was given a battalion or a brigade, then he would become a command sergeant major. Now, a command sergeant major could also be in charge of a division or the post or whatever the case might be, but they have to usually work their way up towards that. And there's not a whole lot of difference in pay, it really just kind of it goes off of how long that command sergeant major has been in the military. But from there, a command sergeant major could potentially move on to be sergeant major of the army. Now at that point, only one person can get promoted to Sergeant Major of the Army. Currently, the Sergeant Major of the Army is Sergeant Major Daly. And while he technically is the rank of an E9, Command Sergeant Major or Sergeant Major of the Army, he actually gets paid a lot more than the, just the Command Sergeant Majors and Sergeant Majors. Sergeant Major of the Army has a little bit different of pay than just your traditional E9. And if a soldier manages to make it all the way to Sergeant Major of the Army, that's pretty much the highest you can go as an enlisted soldier. So there you go, that's a kind of a breakdown of the rank in the army. I might have gotten a little bit too in-depth with some ranks, um, and maybe not as in-depth as I could have with other ones, but that could have really even increased the video length a lot more. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how rank kind of works in the US Army. So hopefully you found this video interesting, educational. If so, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here and you wanna see more Military Monday or Two Minute Tuesday or the vlogs or anything else I create on this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm Christopher Chaos, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. See ya.